Welcome back friends. In the previous video, we have just talked the introductory part about the RNA editing in eukaryotic system. Now in this video, we will be talking about an example or a type of RNA editing which is uh, the type of addition or incorporation of uridine inside the RNA sequence uh, using the guide mRNA pathway. Okay, so this is this one. So we will be talking about addition now. Addition of uridine using by gRNA or guide RNA mediated pathway. Okay. Now, first I must tell you what are gRNA or guide RNA. Now, remember I have told you that uh, no longer scientists believe that the intron sequences are playing important role because intron sequences are playing some key roles inside the eukaryotic sequences, eukaryotic system. Now, among those roles, this one of the role is this gRNA because this gRNA is nothing but a part of degraded intron so it's a small small rna sequence small fraction of small fragment of rna sequence that are just coming out after the degradation of introns after splicing also okay so those small part of the rna act as a guide rna why they are called grna or guide rna because they guide the process of rna editing in eukaryotic system how they guide this process let's look at here so in this case what we are having we are having say our uh, let's say let's say our gene so say rna so say this is the rna of our interest so this is the rna of our interest okay now this rna is having a particular structure i'm not writing the letters for the rna so it's having a particular structure this is the uh, 3 prime and so this sorry, so this is the 5 prime that's like this is the 5 prime process and this is the 3 prime process uh, 3 prime okay anyway. and this guide rna are small though they are small but now in this picture i'm writing uh, big because otherwise you can't see this so uh, this is the guide rna so let me write it here this is the guide rna so the guide rna as they are small a short stretch of rna sequences they can have remarkable complementary region with rna sequences so the rna sequence that just have produced so this blue one is our desired so this is our rna sequence and this is our grna okay now as this grna short segment of rna they are having exact matches most of the portions of the rna right so they just go and attach to the rna sequence using complementary base pairing okay so here it is it attaches but one part of the section is coming out or popping out so this is the guide rna right it attaches like that okay now this guide rna one part is looped out why because rest of the regions are making bonds using complementary nature so using base complementarity they pair with each other but rest of the part at this particular location they don't have any bond because here at this region uh, so let me it says as wrong actually let me write it this way so here what we get is like that okay so so what we get is there is a complementarity at this region and also at this region but there is no complementarity at this middle part which is filled with some adenine sequences so let me write it here some adenines so there are some adenines that are present in this guide region so as there is no adenine present in the opposite rna strand there is no pairing between the adenine and uracil as there is no uracil present so there is no bonding so that's why this part of the section of guide rna is popping out is bulged out form a loop but rest of the part finds the complementary partner so they pair so we get a structure like that right now in like this this grna is having maximum resemblance in their nucleotide structure or complementary nucleotide structure with rna except for few regions except for few regions so let me write it few regions Uh, having some extra adenosine in this case some extra adenosine okay so in this part 
but rest of the part is a remarkable complementarity so it pairs with this like that bind with it via the hydrogen bonding after binding with it because remember this guide rna the goal of guide rna is to mediate the editing is to incorporate some uracil into the place right so as it binds with this sequence using some extra u now can you guess what is going to happen now the sec next process is that it will recruit an endonuclease now the endonuclease will come and cleave this particular site so let let us write it here endonuclease will come and it will cleave this region after the cleavage via the endonuclease what it results is something like that here it is and it simply break the phosphodiester linkage at this particular site okay so this is the endonuclease site okay now this part remains as it is okay let's draw it okay okay so endonuclease make a cleavage here it's a cleaved site so the rna strand is getting cleaved by endonuclease and it is the grna it is intact bind with the sequence okay but these two sections won't float away because they are held by this grna segments after that this grna segment is free now so it will stretch try to understand this concept this grna is free because there is nothing to hold at this point this grna can stretch so as a result what we get now we get stretched out grna having the a regions at this bulge region okay similarly we get this part of the rna of our interest okay so it is getting stretched out like that now as it is getting stretched out like that we are having a region or gap onto the rna right it is creating a gap in this rna sequence so now rest of the region is paired using complementarity this part of the section is free for any nucleotide sequence so now what it needs to do it need to put some nucleotide in this particular region right what kind of nucleotide they are going to put in the complementarity in the complementary strand we are having adenosine so must we need to we, have, we need to put uracil at this places right so we need to put some uracil so we need d u t p to put here right and for this attachment or addition of d u t p on the middle section remember what we know that normally the uh, the nucleotide sequences are joined via the polymerization activity of polymerase enzyme but polymerase enzyme cannot put something at the middle like that okay because if it need to put it need to chew rest of the part that is not wanted in rna editing but what happens in rna editing is that there needs an another enzyme and the enzyme is specialized it is called tutas or tutase and the full form is terminal so let me write it here terminal deoxy nucleotidyl transferase or tutase it is called terminal deoxy nucleotidyl transferase or tutase it will also come now this tutase enzyme will add one after one uridyl sequences there so it will start adding the uridin sequences so if i draw this structure here here we go and let me draw the guide rna this one is a guide rna adenosines are placed there and two tails will add uracil one after another in this stretch of sequence so now what we get this is our rna this is our grna so what we get we fill this gap with uridine sequence right so now the whole dna rna whole whole both of the rna strands are complementary now right after that remember this last part is having a nick so we need to fill the nick for filling the nick what we need to add we need to add dna ligase right now in this case this 
should not be a DNA ligase, it's RNA ligase. So we must write it RNA ligase. So this ligase will come and it will seal the nick. Right? And it will end the process. So now, if you look at this carefully, what we get, we start with this process. We are we are have our RNA and we are also having a segment of gRNA which is having maximum complementarity but having a slightly different region which is having a poly A stretch. Okay. Now it, this poly A stretch is getting a loop like structure because there is nothing to pair with. But now what they in, introduce, they introduce an endonucleus at the scene. It will cleave a section there, this side. After this cleavage, this gRNA stretch out. And after the stretching of gRNA, there is produce a gap. Now we need to fill the gap. As the opposite strand, we are having adenosine, we must put uracil to fill the gap. So uracil will come, DUTP will come using terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase or deoxyuridylyl transferase in this case. We must write it here as it is a we transferring UTP. So we must write terminal deoxyuridylyl transferase. So uridylyl transferase will come and it will start adding those uridine residues there. After adding the uridine residues, what we get, we are making a pairing with adenosine on the opposite gRNA strand. So we make a complementary pairing. After that, we need to seal the nick using ligase enzyme. So we seal the nick using ligase. Now what we get is a stretch of DNA which is a little bit longer than the previous. Right? So in the previous case, what we get, the RNA is smaller like that. But now, we have added four uridine residues somewhere there. As a result of four uridine residues, the RNA segment is slightly long. It's a four nucleotide long sequence, right? So we get a variation of this RNA. Now, as we get a variation of the RNA, what we can get? We can get the variation in protein, right? So after that, once we produce the proteins, the proteins will also vary, right? So if we classify these stages, what we get? One is the cleavage of endonuclease. So this is the first part of our reaction, endonuclease. Uh, cleavage. Uh, first part of the reaction is a uh, hybridization of this RNA with gRNA, right? So this is the first part. Hybridization is the first part. After that, the second part is the cleavage with endonuclears. Third part is the activity of tutase and adding DUTP sequences. So this is the third. And the fourth step is the ligation of the nick using ligase. After all of this, what we get is a different length of RNA which was previously there. So now we can get different variety of protein from this same type of RNA. So one type of protein from this normal RNA, another type of a, a protein we get from this edited RNA. Now what this uh, edited RNA can result into? This edited RNA can give rise to different type of protein. It can give rise to short form of the previous protein or it can uh, can produce a malfunctioning protein. But we need to take this because there is also possibility it can produce no protein because a malfunctioning protein. It can be also possible. It can produce a toxic protein. It can be also possible. But cell or eukaryotic system need to take this risk because otherwise it cannot provide a variety of proteins because it needs the variety of protein throughout its lifetime. Okay, so this is a process of RNA or guide RNA mediated process. Now we can see this guide RNA is helping this editing to, to be established. That's why it is called guide RNA. Okay, and what we produce here in throughout this place, nothing is present as DNA sequence. Everything is RNA. Whatever we are looking at double standard, all of them are DS RNA sequences. And this DS RNA that we get, get is obviously, it's a hybrid, right? It's a hybrid sequence, one with normal RNA, another one is the guide RNA. Okay, so this is a hybrid that we are looking in. Okay, and another important thing I must tell you is that I have I, I, I've denoted, I have drawn a small fraction of the portion, but actually what happens is something more complex is that we are having a long RNA of our interest and the guide RNA, remember I have told you there are small stretch of sequences, so say this is a guide RNA, it comes and hybridizes first, so this is the guide RNA and this is the normal RNA. So you can see how the proportional difference is between the RNA and guide RNA because guide RNA are very small. So they will come and attach first and then they modify the sequence, then again release and then after again they will attach to another section. So after, after modifying this part of the section, it will be attached to some other section. The, and the section, sorry, they will attach here now and they will modify this section, they will move. So that's how they are moving at this direction. So there is a directionality 
in RNA editing. That is very very important. There is remember directionality of RNA editing and the directionality is 3 prime to 5 prime of the template RNA or of the uh, substrate RNA. Okay, substrate RNA. So this is very very important. I forgot to mention this in my previous introductory slide that this directionality is very very important. So it never haphazardly bind with the sequences because it need to arrange or edit the RNA sequentially. So if this is this blue thing is the substrate RNA for our interest, so there must be this is the three prime, this is the five prime. So they will start RNA editing at three prime and they will move towards five prime. So that's the way of RNA editing, right? Okay, so that's it and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.